Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Course Studio. Welcome to the show. So our last, last day, I, I think this should be the last day of spoiler season, one would think. Uh, although I guess at the beginning of next week, we do have Commander Precon spoiled for what cards are left to be spoiled because yeah, we have gotten quite a few leaks recently, including Denry, Clint, Editor-in-Chief. And it took me exactly, you know, three seconds to break this card. So make sure you check that episode out at some point. Also check the episode out on Lagrella the Magpie. I have been waiting for this commander for so long. It is the perfect commander for one of my decks and I just can't tell you how happy I am that this is a commander now. And speaking of that, a lot of players out there I'm sure are gonna be very happy about Giada Fawn of Hope, especially Angel Tribal Commanders. Yeah, Giada packs a punch. But don't leave just yet to check out those episodes because this commander is rubbish. No, literally, uh, its name is Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer, which, is that an Oscar the Grouch reference? Because if so, well done. But like I've been saying, I, I think I've been saying this on every episode today, in the comments below, please thank Eddie for all of his hard work during spoiler season. Now also, if I do make a mistake, blame Eddie, but please thank Eddie first. And now with that said, let's jump into it. So Oscar the Grouch, yeah, there's probably going to be quite a few uh, altered versions of this card with that. Oscar Rubbish Reclaimer is a 3-3 human wizard for 3 blue black. It has this spell costs 1 less to cast for each different mana value among cards in your graveyard. So although this commander does cost 5 mana, obviously we could cast it for as low as 2 very easily. And yeah, I mean, even with commander tax, we could reduce that as well and just keep casting it at 2. It also has, whenever you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. So this commander, of course, is all about discarding cards, and yeah, I mean, that is pretty fantastic. I mean, obviously, that first part, having cards in our graveyard is a good thing, because Oscar's gonna cost less to cast if we need to recast him, but yeah, pretty much every card now is madness. Okay, non-land, still non-land, but this is basically just madness. Everything is madness. And now those lines from 300 are stuck in my head. This is madness. This is Sparta. <clears throat> okay, but um, yeah, I think the Oscar the Grouch reference wins out on that. Regardless, that is an incredibly potent effect that gives us a ton of value throughout the game. There are plenty of ways that we can utilize discard to our advantage and get a lot of benefits from that. And then we still actually get to cast that card. So instead of gaining value by discarding cards and losing out on the actual card, we do not do that. We still have access to that card. Now again, non-land, so remember, don't discard lands and do this, but yes, now you can just keep casting spells by discarding them, which is fantastic. Now, please comment below because I'm actually not sure if this lets you get around timing restrictions with that card. I don't think so, but I could be wrong. I mean, basically, you know, if you're on an opponent's turn and you discard a sorcery spell, could you cast it? Again, I don't think so, but I could be wrong. Rules lawyers, please help me out. Thank you. But also to help you out for every card that I'm talking about in this episode, I've included them in a link in the description below in case you want to pick some up ahead of time. Because as new cards are spoiled and leaked, well, when certain commanders become popular, some cards do go up in demand pretty quickly. So if you want to get those cards sooner rather than later, there you go. And now with all that said, let's talk about the cards. The first card that came to my mind, which is one of my personal favorites, I mean, it's probably my favorite discard outlet, this card is incredible, Zombie Infestation. It's an enchantment for one in a black, a very simple card that simply says, discard two cards, create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token. So, yes, now we just turn our cards into zombies. Well, two for one zombie, but it's a 2-2, two -two, so yeah, that's, that's a decent trade-off. Especially since, again, with those cards that we're discarding, again, as long as they're non-land, we can still cast them. 
And of course, we get any other additional benefits that we get from actually discarding cards. And yeah, a free sacrifice outlaw like this one can be incredible in this deck when we're set up properly. And speaking of being set up properly, well, another fantastic discard outlet that is potentially even, I mean, it, it's, it can be broken in some situations, Scourge Familiar. It's a 3-2 Phyrexian Imp that has discard a card, add black. So this turns our cards into mana, and then we actually can utilize that mana from discarding that card to help cast the card itself. Which is pretty funny, it's kind of like a discount on every single one of our cards in a really weird roundabout way with our commander, essentially. Next up, now a, a card that I, I don't even know. One second, I will check how expensive this thing is. Thanks, Scryfall. I actually thought it was going to be more expensive. It is $43. That is still very expensive. It's on the reserve list. But yeah, Mind Over Matter is an incredible card. It is a discard outlet that is fantastic. It says, discard a card you may tap, run, tap, target, artifact, creature, or land. So, you know, at the very least, you know, if you don't have anything else to tap down or untap, you can untap one of your lands to get a mana back, essentially, that you're going to be utilizing for the spell that you're discarding. Or, you know, if you've got a bounce land in play, which taps for two, there you go. You're actually just, you know, making even more mana than the Scourge Familiar now. And, of course, yeah, if you've got any other things to untap, or if you want to tap down your opponent's creatures or artifacts, this is a very powerful card, and there's a reason why it's expensive. That being said, yeah, there are a good amount of free discard outlets out there, so make sure on the lookout for those. Now, some discard outlets that they actually pay for, but not a lot, and ones that can provide you a lot of value throughout the game are cards like Artificer's Intuition and Tortured Existence. Artificer's Intuition has pay a blue, discard an artifact card from your hand, search your library for an artifact card with converted mana cost, one or less, reveal that card, put in your hand, then shelf your library. So if you've got a decent amount of artifacts in your deck, this is definitely one to consider, especially if you've got a lot of low-to-the-ground artifacts. Again, just discard an artifact, go tutor up a soul ring, and yeah, you can still cast the artifact that you actually discarded with this. So, yeah, then I guess discard that Soul Ring, cast it, go tutor for another artifact, which you can then discard to cast it. You see where this is going. And then Tortured Existence lets you pay black to discard a creature card to return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you've got some key creatures in this deck, again like that Phyrexian Imp that might get dealt with, well, just take one of your creatures from your hand, discard it, you know, with this, get that Imp back in your hand, and while you're at it, sure, let me just, you know, actually cast that creature I just discarded with this too. So this is kind of like a free way, I mean, not free, it does cost one mana, essentially, just to get creatures back in your hand without actually losing out on anything. And of course, like I mentioned, there are a good amount of fantastic benefits from actually, you know, discarding these cards and, you know, utilizing them in this way with your commander, like, you know, Secrets of the Dead. This is an enchantment that says, whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. Yeah, this card is not just for Moldrotha, it's for this commander as well. Because again, keep in mind, our commander does say when you discard a non-land card, you may cast it from your graveyard. So we are casting it from the graveyard, therefore we get to draw a card by doing so. So this commander has kind of like a convoluted route of value, but I absolutely love it. It's like, okay, yeah, discard that card. Okay, it's in your graveyard. Okay, cast. Now draw a card from this. Awesome. Value. Somehow. Somehow this just generates value by saying, I'd like to get rid of this card, but not really. Cool. So yeah, this card I think is actually very budget friendly right now with its reprint. I think this was C19. Yeah, bottom left corner, C19. Yeah, so make sure you pick this one up if you're going to build around this commander. Moving forward, a card also from C19 that I really wish that they would reprint, Bone Miser. Okay, I guess it's on the list, but actual reprint, please. Thank you. Anyways, Bone Miser is an incredible card for this deck. It says, whenever you discard a creature card, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Whenever you discard a land card, add black black. Whenever you discard a non-creature non-land card, draw a card. So no matter what we discard, we are benefiting from this. Again, with our commander, we can still cast something that isn't a land, but we still get a benefit from discarding a land. You know, again, adding black black, that's fantastic. And again, by discarding a creature, we make a zombie, and we can also cast that creature from the graveyard, or if we discard a non-creature non-land, we draw a card, and we can and also cast that card from our graveyard. So yeah, again, it's kind of like we're supposed to lose out on value by discarding, but we don't with this commander. Next up, Feast of Sanity. Whenever you discard a card, Feast of Sanity deals one image to any target and you gain one life. This card can dish out a lot of pain throughout the game and it can be an absolute menace to tiny creatures and actually even larger creatures as well, you know, because you can still utilize some of those cards that you're discarding most likely by casting them still. So yeah, I mean, if you got a full grip, discard some cards, take out that creature and utilize the spells that you can. 
Next up, a new card that I want to highlight from this set, All-Seeing Arbiter, a 5-4 flying that has, when it enters the battlefield or attacks, draw two cards, then discard a card. So, first up, yeah, this kind of a looting effect can be fantastic with this commander, obviously, because, well, you are getting card advantage from that draw, and then you also can still utilize that card that you are discarding, too, so you can still cast that, so it's kind of like you're getting three cards out of this. Well, okay, you're getting two, but you're getting to keep the other one. You know what I mean. It also says, whenever you discard a card, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X minus zero until your next turn, where X is the number of different mana values among cards in your graveyard. So again, you already benefit, you know, with your commander costing less based on the number of mana values in your graveyard, and now you benefit again whenever you discard cards, shrinking creatures until your next turn. So this can kind of just take creatures out of the combat equation and kind of make them essentially useless for your opponents just by discarding cards. So this can be a great combat trick for you. But next up, of course, I've got to bring up some cards like Archfiend of Ifnir and Cure to Mysteries, which first up, they have cycling, which works great with this commander because, well, you can just cycle the card away and then still utilize it again. You get to draw that card and you also can still be like, well, I'd still like to cast the card that I just discarded, so I will. But yeah, Archfiend of Ifnir says, whenever you cycle or discard another card, put a minus one, minus one counter on each creature your opponent's control. Good luck to your opponents keeping any creatures in play when you have this in play and you've got a free discard outlet ready to go. Not only can you just wipe the board and keep their creatures off of it, but yeah, you can just perpetually be like, um, you better not play any creatures or I'm just going to keep either shrinking them where they're just basically useless or taking them out. And then Curator of Mysteries can provide a ton of value throughout the game. It says whenever you cycle or discard another card, scry one. So while scrying isn't card advantage, it is fantastic card selection. And yeah, this can really help us avoid dead cards and dig to the right cards that we need for the situation that we're in. And sometimes those right cards might be Faith of the Devoted or Drake Haven or Dying to Serve, which also benefit off of discard, but in different ways. Faith of the Devoted says whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one. If you do, each opponent loses two life and you gain two life. That is a good amount to drain for your opponents for every single card that you discard. Again, you do have to pay for this, so do keep in mind. But um, yeah, if you've got a free discard outlet, one mana per each card is not all that much. Or, you know, you can use that mana for Drake Haven, which says whenever you cycle or discard a card, you may pay one if you do create a 2-2 blue Drake creature token with flying. My favorite combination with this in a discard outlet is, of course, zombie infestation. So you get those flyers and you get those ground creatures and you can make a ton of creature tokens very quickly with that combination. And, uh, I mean, let's just throw in Dying to Serve because why not? Dying to Serve says whenever you discard one or more cards, create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token. This ability triggers only once each turn. Now again, Wizards is the fun police sometimes, and I really dislike this ability triggers only once each turn on a lot of cards, including this one, but it's still effective in this deck. The card, not the actual text. Anyways, obviously with a free discard outlet, we can discard cards at any time we want to, so yeah, just discard on your opponent's turns, and then there you go. Every single turn you discard, you are going to get a 2-2 zombie, so in one trip around the table, you can get four zombies out of this. And speaking of zombies, well, another thing you're going to want to consider are cards like Tormod the Desecrator and Sir Conrad the Grim. Sir Conrad says whenever one of our cards leave your graveyard, create a tap 2-2 black zombie creature token. So yeah, keep in mind how this interaction with our commander works. We discard a card, it's in our graveyard, then we cast it from our graveyard. So yeah, when that card hits and then leaves, if we cast it, we get a 2-2 black zombie. So that's pretty fantastic, and Sir Conrad, well, just loves when creature cards go here, there, or anywhere. It says whenever another creature dies, or a creature card is put into a graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield, or a creature card leaves your graveyard, Sir Conrad the Grim deals one damage to each opponent. So if we discard a creature card with Sir Conrad in play, it's gonna ping all of our opponents for one. Then say we cast that creature from our graveyard, it's gonna then ping our opponents again for one. Because the creature not only was put into our graveyard again from anywhere, our hand, and then, yeah, it also left our graveyard, so ping each opponent. Twice. So just with that small interaction, that is six damage in total, again, assuming we've got three opponents, and yeah, that can add up a lot throughout the game. But now as this episode is coming to a close, it's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Oscar the Grouch, Rubbish Reclaimer 300. I really like the design of this commander. I mean, just having that additional, you know, your commander is going to cost less can definitely help you out throughout the game. But yeah, the, the 
actual kind of, you know, benefit that you get from discarding and still allowing you to actually cast that card, kind of like giving all your cards madness, is pretty crazy. That can be a lot of value throughout the game. And again, you can do some really fun and crazy things, again, with discard outlets and things that benefit from discarding and from things leaving your graveyard, etc., etc., etc. That being said, there are a ton of other exciting spoilers, so make sure you check out those other episodes that I've already done in those quick takes. But um, I, I think I might only have enough time for maybe one more quick take. We'll see. You know, unless somehow spoiler season continues next week, though I guess technically next week we've got the pre-cons, which, you know, some of those have already been spoiled, you know, like with this card being part of the pre-cons. You know what I mean? And with that, the show has come to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again and have a good one.